Hi there, it's Shannon from The Loophole Fox, and today I'm going to be showing you how to create the moss stitch, which is also known as the linen stitch. This is an awesome stitch, especially for beginners, because it only uses single crochet and chains. It's a faster way to work up single crochet rows, and it creates this really pretty woven texture. The stitch itself is a bit stretchy. It does stretch some to the side, but it stretches a lot lengthwise. That makes this stitch good for just about anything you can think of, anything from washcloths like this here, to baby blankets, to sweaters, bags, really anything you can think of. In this tutorial, I'll be teaching you how to work the moss stitch, as well as why it works. So we'll go over the stitch anatomy as well. I have a blog post linked below that will talk about how to do a gauge swatch so that you can make a project in your own size without having to follow a pattern, as well as having the written pattern for this washcloth in case you want to test your skills on something larger. For this tutorial, you do need to know how to chain and single crochet. I'll show you how to do everything else. For this tutorial, you'll of course need yarn and a hook. Any yarn and hook you prefer is fine for practicing this stitch. For the purposes of this tutorial, I'm using this nice bulky weight yarn so it shows up nicely on your screen. This is Bernat Softy Chunky in Seafoam Green. I'm also using my Furl's 7mm uh, Streamline Wood hook. And I have some stitch markers here to the side. Typically, once you understand this stitch, you won't need the stitch markers, but as I'm teaching it to you as if you've never worked this stitch before, I would recommend having some stitch markers. I will show you both with and without a stitch marker so that you can practice either way. For the moss or linen stitch, you need an even amount of stitches. This means we're going to chain an odd amount to get started. So what we're going to do, of course, is put a slip knot on our hook and chain an odd amount. The purposes of this tutorial, I'm going to go ahead and chain 13. You can chain as many as you prefer. I would recommend a shorter swatch while you get started, so you know don't chain 100, um, but I'm going to go ahead and chain 13 if you want to follow along with me as I do it. So let's go ahead and chain 13. So here I have my 13 chains. The anatomy of the moss stitch is essentially single crochets, but they are separated by a chain one space, which creates this kind of woven texture that you see here versus the very tight single crochet rows. It creates this more woven texture. In order to make the pattern work as it should with an even number of stitches, we need to create a chain one space in the beginning of this first row, so that way on the second row we have somewhere to put our last single crochet. I know that's a lot of information, and I know that that's confusing right now. You'll understand what I mean in a minute, but I wanted to explain it to you before I tell you how to get started so that you know why I'm doing something. To start the first row of the moss stitch, you'll want to skip two chains and single crochet into the third. I know that's not what you'd normally do. Normally you would skip one chain and put a single crochet in the second. But for this stitch, and we're creating a chain one space, we're skipping two and putting a single crochet in the third. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now. So I'm going to go ahead and remove my hook and show you. Here we have our first single crochet and the two chains that we skipped. These two chains basically create a side and a chain one space. If you kind of push and finagle this here, you can see the chain one space right in here. When you're learning, this can be really difficult to find. As you keep practicing the moss stitch, you'll know where to find this chain one space. 
but for the purposes of being a beginner and learning this stitch with no prior knowledge, I'm going to go ahead and recommend that you put a stitch marker around the chains. So we're basically just going to isolate these two chains here, take our stitch marker and wrap it around. So by wrapping the stitch marker around the chains, it doesn't actually go into any of the stitches. See how it's just kind of encompassing those chains? We haven't gone actually into either of these chains because we don't want to make a false chain one space. So when you put a stitch marker around these chains, just make sure that it's actually around the chains, not into either one. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and reintroduce my hook and just like I mentioned before we're going to skip the first two chains and we're going to put a single crochet in the third. Okay, So now you can see with this completed that that chain one space is marked on both sides so you'll be able to kind of hold the single crochet and pull this apart if you need to, to find that chain one space on our second row. So you can mark that and it'll be easier while you're learning. The rest of the row is pretty straightforward and simple. We're going to repeat doing a chain one, skipping a chain, and then putting a single crochet in the chain one space all the way to the end. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and chain one, skip a chain, single crochet in the next, okay, so you can see how it's created this kind of hole here in between the two single crochets. Your single crochets of course have their feet or their post here and the top of the stitch. So this chain one, skip one, creates a space. Okay, let's finish this row chain one, skip one, single crochet in the next, chain one, skip one, single crochet in the next, chain one, skip one, single crochet in the next. Okay, so now we have two chains left. We're going to go ahead and chain one. We're going to skip one and put a single crochet in the last chain. This finishes our row, our first row. So before we move on to a second row, I want to talk about the anatomy of this stitch so far. When we started, I had said we need to start with an odd amount of chains for an even amount of stitches. And if you do the math in your head, you would think, wait, that's not an even amount of stitches. Now, we're counting the chain one spaces as a stitch in this. So you do technically have an even amount. You have a single crochet, a chain one, a single crochet, a chain one, all the way across the row. You will have 12 stitches. You have one, two, three, four, five, six single crochets and one, two, three, four, five, six chain one spaces. For the rest of this pattern, you will always be putting a single crochet in a chain one space, and you'll always be chaining one and skipping the single crochet from the row previous. You'll see what I mean when we move up a row. I just wanted to show you again, up a little bit closer, this is what it looks like uh, with the first row finished, and this is the back side. And it might, as you're learning, if you're, especially if your tension isn't you know, on point yet, it might be a bit wonky and a little bit difficult to find those chain one spaces. What you can do is, either side facing, is you can kind of stretch this a bit. Don't be afraid to you know, get strong with it. And when you stretch it, you can see these chain one spaces starting to isolate themselves. Okay. You can also look at it this way. You know you have a chain one space here marked. You know this post is a single crochet. So you know a chain one space is here. Single crochet, chain one space. So 
sorry, chain one space, single crochet, chain one space, so on and so forth. Beyond this row, those chain one spaces will be a lot easier to find. Let's go ahead and move on to row two. So remember how we started this row creating a chain one space by skipping two chains? We need to use a similar technique to make a chain one space on this side after we turn. So to do this, we're going to go ahead and chain two. Normally with a single crochet, you would only chain one and then you would put the single crochet of your second row in the top of the first single crochet. For the moss stitch, we're chaining two, we turn, and we're going to skip the single crochet and put a single crochet in the first chain one space. If you'd like, similar to the last row, you can take a stitch marker and you can wrap it around those two chains to mark that space. On the next row, I'll show you how it looks when you don't use a stitch marker. Okay, so we have chain two, and we're creating a chain one space by skipping the single crochet. The first chain of this chain two acts as the side of your work to keep your work moving upward as it should, and this second chain here actually acts as the chain one space that goes over the single crochet. Okay, chain two, mark your chain if you like, skip the single crochet, find the next chain one space, and put a single crochet in that space. Okay, now we have a single crochet next. We need to work a chain one to skip the single crochet and put a single crochet in the next chain one space. We're going to continue this across the row. We're going to chain one, skip the single crochet, and put a single crochet in the chain one space. And remember, you can find that by isolating the post and knowing there's a chain one space next to it. Isolating the post, of the single crochet and knowing that there is a chain one space next to it. So we've chained one. The post of the single crochet is here, so we're going to skip that and put a single crochet in that chain one space. Chain one, skip the single crochet, put a single crochet in the next chain one space. Chain one, skip the single crochet, put a single crochet in the next chain one space. And we're at the end now. We have the chain one space marked with a stitch marker. We need to skip this last single crochet, so we're going to chain one. And if you pull gently on that stitch marker, and you can even grab the single crochet with your thumb and finger and kind of pull it apart, you can find that chain one space. We're just going to put a single crochet into that space. And now you can really see it now that I've worked a single crochet into it. See how the stitch marker moves freely? It's not snagged on anything. That's your last chain one space. And we've got the chain one on the start of the second row marked here. So this is what the moss stitch looks like so far. You can see it kind of weaving itself together now. And here's the other side. You can tell that the single crochets are starting to become a lot more pronounced and easier to find on this second row. After another row or two, they'll be even easier to find. We'll do a couple more rows together. This time I'm going to go ahead and not use a stitch marker, so that way you can see what it looks like without. We're going to work the third row exactly the same as the second. With the moss stitch, every single row is worked the same. So it's very easy to remember, and it's a really easy pattern to sit down and work while you're watching TV, 
listening to a podcast or even having a conversation. <laughs> All right, so just like we worked row two, we're going to go ahead and chain two and we're going to turn this chain two. The first chain creates the side, the second chain creates a chain one space. And you'll see what I mean when we get over to this side. We're going to skip the first single crochet and put a single crochet in the chain one space. So here's the single crochet. That's the last one we put in for row two. And here is the chain one space next to it. So we'll put a single crochet in there. And you can see my chain one space right in here. Okay. Just like row two, we're going to chain one, skip the single crochet, work a single crochet in the chain one space, chain one, skip the single crochet, single crochet in the chain one space. If you notice that as you put a single crochet, it seems to be leaving kind of a big hole here. Don't worry about that. It will sort of calm down and as you put more stitches in, it will work itself out. So if you're noticing gaps kind of like that, I really wouldn't worry about it. I'd just keep going. You can always give it a proper stretch and it'll work itself out. Okay, chain one, skip the single crochet, single crochet in the next, chain one, skip the single crochet, single crochet in the next. We're at the end now and we want to make sure we pay attention to this chain one space. So we've got the post of our single crochet here. And this time we've marked with a stitch marker the chain one space. Just like on the row below, you can pinch the single crochet and pull this apart to find the chain one space there if you need to. I'm sorry about that. Okay, so you can, as you're learning, you can really utilize these stitch markers to pull things apart, which is really important, especially if you're getting used to your tension and things are a little bit too tight. Okay, so we're going to chain one, skip that last single crochet, and in the chain one space that we've created here, we're going to put a single crochet. And counting the chain spaces of the stitch, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So you can see how creating those chain one spaces at the beginning keeps our counts even and keeps our work going straight. Let's do one more together so you can see what it looks like to work into the chain one space uh, without a stitch marker. Again, this is a one row repeat, so we're going to do the same thing over again. We're going to chain two. We're going to turn our work. Remember this chain two creates the side of the work, like you can see here. And the second chain creates the chain one space, that space that we've been working into that we marked with stitch markers. Okay, so we have chain two. We're going to skip the single crochet and work a single crochet in the next chain one space. We're going to chain one skip a single crochet and find the next chain one space and put a single crochet in there. Chain one, skip a single crochet, single crochet in the chain one space. Chain one, skip the single crochet, single crochet in the chain one space. Chain one, Skip the single crochet, single crochet in the chain one space. Chain one, skip the single crochet, and we're at the end, so we need to find the chain one space without a stitch marker. So I've removed my hook so that I can bring this up close to you. Now we've talked about the anatomy of the single crochet a bit. You know, it has its post here, 
and the top of the stitch here, which you can see just like the top of a single crochet normally looks. To find this chain one space, once you get used to working this stitch, you'll know just to kind of shove your hook into this space here and that there's a chain one space. But as you're learning, it can be difficult to make sure that you're working into the correct space without a stitch marker. So it's important to remember these two straight up and down lines here create the post of the single crochet. So regardless of whatever you do, you do want to make sure that you put the hook beyond those two straight up and down lines that create the post of the single crochet. So a couple things you can do. You can look at the top of the work. You know your single crochet is here. And you can take a look and know that this is a chain and work underneath it. You can also, like I've done a couple of times, pinch the single crochet and pull the chains away to isolate them a little bit. You can see that they'll stretch and move as long as you are comfortable with pulling on your work a bit. Pulling on your work won't ruin anything. You're just learning and creating a swatch, so don't be afraid to really get in there and feel how everything works. So you can see now that I've isolated those two stitches and kind of pushed and pulled my finger into that area. It's really isolated those two chains. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and reintroduce my hook to finish this row. I have my single crochet and my chain one. We're going to skip the last single crochet and work into that chain one space that I've isolated. And that is the moss stitch. You can see how by putting the single crochets in the chain one spaces, on each row they move over one. So they kind of zigzag back and forth. To count your rows, you'd count them in that zigzag fashion. So row one, row two, row three, row four. So I count the posts of those single crochets. As you keep going, the stitch pattern itself looks more and more woven, so it has a really beautiful finish, and of course, like I mentioned before, it is quite stretchy. See, look at that. So it's a really good mesh stitch, especially for things like bags, if you need um, some stretch. What's really interesting is if you hold the chains and the top and you give that a proper stretch, you can really see how the chain spaces and the single crochets isolate themselves. So while it's kind of pulled and stretched a bit, you can see these chain spaces and then the single crochets working into them. It's a really basic stitch, but it's really interesting just, one, how easy it is, but also it's interesting just how much stretch it gives you. And it's a really fun way to learn and get used to the anatomy of a single crochet. So I just want to show you something in this washcloth. Um, like I mentioned previously, when once you know the stitch, it's very easy to work up and it's really repetitive. So it's easy to listen to a podcast, watch TV, have a conversation while you're working this stitch. Now what can happen is you can, of course, make a mistake and I'll show you a mistake in mine. As we know from the tutorial, the single crochets always need to go into chain one spaces, right? Well, you can see here where a single crochet accidentally went into the top of a single crochet instead of the chain one space it should have gone into. So this can happen. It's really not a big deal. Of course, if you notice it in the row, you should take it apart and you should fix the mistake. But I didn't notice this actually until I finished the washcloth. And I want to show you, it's really forgiving. Because that single crochet just happened to go into the top of that stitch, I still worked my chain one and my next single crochet. It did create the space 
for the single crochet on the next row to go into. So the pattern did write itself. It doesn't have any wonky edges or anything like that. So I just really want to show you that this is a really forgiving stitch. Once you lay it down, you're, it, it's difficult to find that little mistake. Of course, I know where it is because I've looked for it specifically for this tutorial, but it's actually quite difficult to find a mistake once you've completed the pattern. It is very forgiving. Like I said, you should fix the mistake if you see it, but am I going to undo this entire washcloth for the sake of one single crochet being in the top of this single crochet here? Probably not. So that's really all there is to the moss or linen stitch. As you can see, it works up beautifully with a variegated yarn. It looks beautiful in a solid color, and it also looks awesome in planned colors like these pictures here. This is my fledgling baby blanket pattern, and you can see how it creates the zigzag stripes, which I think is really awesome. That's all there is for this moss stitch tutorial. There is a blog post linked below, and I want to remind you that that does include a photo tutorial if you prefer photo tutorials, and it will have some explanation on how to create a swatch to make a project on your own in this stitch without having to follow a pattern. There will be a little bit of math in there, but I'll try to keep it as simple as possible. That's it for today. I hope you feel confident and successful moving forward working this stitch. Thank you so much for hanging out with me, and happy crocheting!